Does the millennial generation have a midlife crisis? I'm sorry, but did you say midlife crisis? <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> you said midlife crisis. Now, now, see, I don't know where you've been, but we've been in crisis since I came out the womb. So you feel unfulfilled in life. You feel like you're eternally chasing the proverbial carrot, but never actually achieving the financial freedom you always dreamt of. You would never tell anyone, but every time you open up your Instagram, you feel pangs of envy and jealousy. I mean, hashtag dream team, hashtag relationship goals. They can go shove it up there. Maybe you also feel that you could have done more if only you had more, more opportunities, more money, more connections, or maybe you even feel you could have achieved more if only you had been born into a different family. But you don't have to keep feeling this way. Let's start by understanding the problem because you are right. The world is kind of against us. Being an adult in today's economy is simply unfair, especially with inflation and the constant panic of an economic crisis every couple of years. Honestly, all we wanted was just to buy a house. But because of the way the system has evolved, most of us are now living paycheck to paycheck. And yet, we're the ones being called lazy and soft. Someone on Quora clearly thought the same, so they put out a question on the platform. Just about every fully employed man in the 50s could afford to buy a home. Why is that not the case now? Joseph Alonji, I think it's pronounced that way. Anyway, he answered with the super easy to understand response. Simple, he says. The ratio of gross income earned versus the cost of buying a house has increased dramatically. How much was a house in the 50s? 10 to 15,000 US dollars. In 1967, the average was about $22,000. How much was the average salary? According to this chart, which he links in his answer, the average salary in 1967 was about $10,000. The cost of housing versus the average salary was about 2x. Now, according to the same chart, the average salary now is about $52,000. The average cost of a house in the US, about $350,000. In 1967, the ratio was 2 to 1, and in 2017, the ratio is about 7 to 1. That's the reason why it's much harder to afford a home now than it was in the 50s. I mean, wow, very clear and concise explanation, Joseph, thank you very much, but it doesn't make me feel better, because now we're eternal nomads stuck in a cycle of renting flats or living with our parents with no sense of stability or a foundation to build on. And then there's the issue of social media. Yes, these platforms have been crucial in providing opportunities that were never available just 15, 20 years ago, but they've also taken a toll on our mental health as well. Even if we know that we're subjecting ourselves to brainwashing, we continue to scroll away mindlessly, regardless. And as we scroll, as technology grows, so does the lack of human connection. Everything is online nowadays. No wonder making friends is hard and dating is even harder. And as if navigating all this isn't hard enough, there's our well-meaning friends with their unsolicited advice. Find your passion, they say. You have time, you're still young, they say. But do you really? Would they be saying that to you if you were 35, 40, 50? I know it really depends on the context, and I know most people mean well when they say this, but this little white lie isn't so little. In fact, it can be rather harmful as it gives people a false sense of comfort and security, resulting in complacency. I agree that I personally took this you don't have time idea to a bit of an extreme. I was always in a rush to grow up because things were really shit at home. So in my head as a kid, I thought growing up would solve all our problems, especially our financial problems, because then I could work as well and I could also contribute. 
I remember doing odd jobs from the age of nine to help my gran who worked at a grocery store at the time. When I was 15, I started working as an English tutor and later on as a model, hostess and presenter. I would use the money to pay for my university tuition fees and I even funded my own exchange year using the money I earned. I even managed to travel a bit around Asia. The modeling and hostessing jobs also took me to places like Hong Kong and Macau where I would work at exhibitions. Time and time again, I was told to slow down and stop overthinking by older people because I was still young, I still had time. And this used to bother me. But looking back, I realized that half of them had no idea what they were doing. And my questions probably made them feel bad. This little story isn't to show you how amazing I am, because do I wish I had an idyllic childhood that allowed me to be a kid? A childhood void of financial worries and the things the adults should have been taken care of. Absolutely. Would it have been easier to have both my parents around growing up? Of course, but I didn't. And that's okay, because my experience built me as a person and gave me character. So no, this isn't to say, look at how amazing I am. You don't have to and shouldn't rush the way I did. I didn't know it at the time, but the rushing and hyper-independence was actually a trauma response, which served me in some ways and in other ways, not so much. I told you the story because I wanted to show you how much a person can achieve when they simply put their mind to it. So believe me when I say that you have time is a cheap and easy cop-out. Now, obviously, I'm not trying to put you into panic mode. Everything had to happen the way it did for you to be watching this video right now. So it's never too late, but the ugly truth is that while it may not be your fault, it becomes your fault when you do nothing to change what you're not satisfied with. Like Maya Angelou said, if you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude. So for instance, if you don't like your job, but can't quit for some reason, choose to feel grateful instead. At least you have a job. Or look at your job as a stepping stone to where you want to be, instead of a prison. If making friends is difficult for you, focus instead on a hobby or a passion. Maybe the friends you're looking for will find you there. If you're dating someone new and he doesn't seem to have his shit together in some aspect or many aspects of his life, stop now before he becomes the father of your children. It doesn't matter how tall he is, he's not worth it. The fact of the matter is, you don't feel fulfilled because you're too afraid of change and you're afraid of change because that could mean failure. But you know what? Regret is worse. And you know what else? Most people don't care about you, so you might as well start that new business, write that book, or move to that country. Lovey Ajayi Jones reminds us in her TED talk that all comfort has done is maintain the status quo. So we have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable by speaking these hard truths when necessary. So here's to another hard truth, and then I promise I'll let you go. You are addicted to instant gratification and this addiction is what keeps you living small. The big corporations and the marketing teams know this. That's why they fuel your addiction to instant gratification through psychological manipulation and mini dopamine hits. Because they know that our brains are hardwired to avoid pain and seek pleasure. But a certain amount of stress is actually good for you. I like to compare this to intermittent fasting. When you fast, it kicks your body into ketosis, which then triggers a process called autophagy, which is a process where your body gets rid of old cells, thereby preventing illnesses, diseases, and possibly cancer. I know I didn't explain this very well, but yeah, that's basically the gist of it. If you're curious to learn more, you can always look up Dr. Berg on YouTube. But imagine getting all these benefits just from starving yourself for a certain amount of time every now and then. Psychological stress works in similar ways. Getting comfortable with discomfort is crucial to building character and resilience, which is exactly what therapy is meant to do. Therapy is meant to help you understand your emotions and triggers, then teach you how to regulate those emotions and manage those triggers in order to make real change and build mental resilience. Right now, I see too many people using the root cause of their trauma 
as an excuse to not take ownership for their own toxic behavior. And they're usually the same people who casually throw out terms like ADHD and narcissistic, despite not having a clear idea of what these terms actually mean. But anyway, this is another topic for another time. Now, when it comes to stress, we want just the right amount to get us moving. You will know it's healthy stress when you feel motivated and inspired. You will know it's unhealthy stress when the stress becomes constant, low-level background anxiety that reduces you to a shadow of your former self, barely surviving, too scared to live, and constantly in fear of judgment from others. Unfortunately, this type of anxiety is a symptom of our modern, fast-paced, connected, yet disconnected world. If you feel that this is the type of stress you're dealing with, I would recommend you to seek out a therapist you resonate with as you could have clinically significant anxiety. But in general, I think it's safe to conclude that we don't want to accept that discomfort and struggle is a crucial part of our growth because we're addicted to instant gratification. And so we rarely take the initiative to make the changes we want to see because it's just easier to keep things as is. And because the mini dopamine hits keep us happy with the bare minimum anyway. The fact is, the more we lose ourselves in the algorithms, the more we believe that the life we want is unattainable. So we continue to do nothing. Maybe at this point in the video, you're thinking, but I do want to break out of the system. Well, in that case, what can you do? What are some steps you can take? Let's start by first looking at what we already know, which is that being comfortable with being uncomfortable is a skill and it's crucial to our personal development. We also know that a healthy amount of stress is good for you and that you still have time is rubbish advice. Now imagine this. Imagine that you go out there and you try to reach your fullest potential by making smart decisions and taking action. You do this with the idea that there's no time like the present because you don't have time. So if your goal is to build a career, find your tribe or attract the right partner, you do everything in your power to make it happen. It might be difficult at times or it might feel uncomfortable, but in the process, you find meaning, you learn and you grow. Oh, and you also realize why find your passion is just rubbish advice. Simply because you can't find anything if you don't go out there first. So you do your part and at the end of each day, you sit back and take comfort in the idea that everything will happen at the right time. You don't worry about when you'll achieve your goals. You just relax and immerse yourself in the process. And as you do this, the things you've been working for find you one by one. But then you realize that somewhere along the line, you were already living your dream life. What does the story look like if we were to summarize it into a list of practical tips? Number one would be to start believing that you can make a change because so many other people were once where you are now. And if they could break out the system, so can you. The second tip is to act now. You don't have time. You won't be young forever. Stop trying to figure out what your passion is. You will find it in the process. I know we've repeated this next one a thousand times, but tip number three is to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Even better, learn to enjoy the discomfort. You know, the way bodybuilders do when they say, no pain, no gain. And remember that a healthy amount of stress builds character and resilience. Now, you can only move on to this next step once you've put in the work and done your part, but tip number four is to trust that everything will happen at the right time. Number five is to always be perceptive and take everything with a pinch of salt. Remember that things aren't always what they seem, especially on social media. There's so much more than what you see on the surface, so never rush to assume that someone is living a better life than you. Never rush to judge someone either. And the last tip is to be grateful for what you have now and to be happy for other people's success. Your turn will come.